Now you are super special. Look at this drone. So pretty and shiny. It certainly deserves a special beta flight release. But I need to find my expert first. Did you hear it? Fuck! A grown man can't just spend some time in nature cacking? Get out of here! Yeah. This video is about Beta Flight Fork that I've been slowly working on for quite a while already. And by no means it's a Beta Flight competitor. Well, because it is Beta Flight. Just with some extra stupid, fun, and not so stupid features. Don't forget, you can use Content Menu to quickly surf through the features I listed there. First of all, you do everything here at your own risk. Even watching this video is quite dangerous. Are you still here? All right, let's go. Of course, you need latest beta flight configurator, which is 10.9 as of today. Or you can use configurator 10.10 .10 development build if you're feeling adventurous. Go to options tab and permanently enable expert mode, then go to firmware flasher. Activate show release candidates, enable expert mode here and select development. Then you can auto detect your flight controller. And here is the magic. In this drop down list, you will be able to select 442 CAC special release. If you're following my channel for quite a while, I already made a video about this beta flight mod. But now things has changed. Now it is super easy to flash it directly from beta flight configurator so you don't need to download any extra hex files thanks to Mr. Blackman. We still don't know how he looks by the way. And also this mod got a few exciting updates recently so let's dive in. As always before flashing save backup of your current settings. That way you can go back if something goes wrong. And for that you can use preset stop save backup button. Or you can use CLI like a caveman. I mean like Mr. Shames. By the way, starting from configurator 10.10, .10, it will be able to save your backup automatically before flashing. Thanks to Mr. Mark for that. You see he's old school, but always pushing configurator forward. By the way, check shitpilot.com store for all the shirts we have here, because Neil is pretty pissed off now because he's not a millionaire yet. <laughs> This is bullshit. So flashing this special release is the same as flashing normal beta flight. Except here you just select this special release. Check your flight controller, check your radio protocol and other settings, click load firmware online, wait till you see success here, and if you don't, you can try to click load firmware online again, and click flash firmware. Apply custom default if you are asked, and there we go. Now you are super special. It's a regular beta flight, which flies and tunes like normal, but it has a few extra features that you might be very excited about, at least I am very excited about. First of all, go to preset tab and apply your previous backup, if your previous version was also 4.4, or you can set up everything from scratch like normal. And the first feature I am very excited about is RPM limiter. And we all need to say big thank you, no like huge thank you to Mr. Tanner for developing this awesome stuff. RPM limiter will be in the official beta flight 4.5, but you can already start using it in this special release. By default, it's off, but when you activate it, get ready for some magic to happen. Every split second, RPM limiter checks the average RPM between your four motors or eight motors, whatever you fly. By the way, RPM stands for rotations per minute, it's just how fast your motors are spinning. And if your motors are spinning faster than the threshold that you set by yourself in the settings, then RPM limiter will automatically cap your throttle. So depending on your settings, it can act, for example, like a very smart battery sag compensation, or it can be used as a maximum speed equalizer across different drones, as long as they fly same props. So when you fly RPM limiter, it feels pretty much like flying with throttle limit type scale with some value here, except this value now is being calculated as you fly in a pretty smart way. And this RPM limiter is being already widely used in Freedom Spec, for example, where it just works flawlessly. In case you didn't know, Freedom Spec is a type of racing where everyone runs equally slow drones. Look at this dirty guy. Poor thing. In previous season, it used to be that everyone just takes normal 6S open class drone and slap 3S battery on it. But then if you have a fresh battery and like a brand new motor, then you're faster than everyone else. Well, now this is out of equation because of RPM limiter. Now you can take your regular 6S battery, turn on RPM limiter and you will be equally slow as everyone else around. Even if someone uses fresh battery, look at that, and you have something like this. 
Freedom spec setting is a little bit more complicated because you need to run specific props, specific motors, your quad should be of a certain weight. Anyways, check freedomspec.com if you're interested in details. I've heard that also tiny whoop guys are acquiring RPM limiters slowly, and even some of the open class full speed racers are using it. They just set RPM limit value pretty high, and without sacrificing too much speed, it gives them consistent feeling between different batteries, and even between the beginning and end of the round on the same battery, consistent feeling. Oh yeah, I like that. So I think it can be useful also for some of the freestyle pilots. First of all, you absolutely need to make sure that you are flying by directional D-shot. Then you have to count number of magnets on the bell of your motor and put this value right here. This is very serious. Do not miss this step. And also this is very useful so that your RPM filters are working correctly. Most of the motors we are using have 14 magnets, but for example, tiny whoop motors are mostly 12 poles. Then you can go to CLI and activate RPM limiter, but it's way easier to do with quick OSD menu. In case you didn't know, to open Betaflight OSD menu, you need to put yaw to the left and then pitch up. If you have regular beta flight, then you will see ordinary beta flight menu. But if you have CAC mod flashed, then you will see a quick menu, which is so quick, it's crazy. By the way, check my Sealy Radio Master modification. And now I have a hole here in front. We're gonna stop at quick menu a little bit later, but let's see the first item. By the way, this works everywhere. Analog, HD0, DJI, Wax Nail. Unless you have old DJI and you're too lazy to root it. And then you have to deal with CLI. And the first item you can see here is RPM limit. Go inside and just activate it or deactivate it. Easy as that. And don't forget to hit save and reboot after any of your changes. The second item in this submenu is your maximum RPM. It's your setting for how fast you want your motors to spin maximum. The default value 18,000 is what Freedom Spec is using. And this makes your 6S drone approximately 3S speed. So 4S speed would be approximately 22,000. 5S will be approximately like, I don't know, 26,000. You gotta experiment with that by yourself and find the values you like. But just a reminder that this is not motor limit this is a smart throttle limit so when you're curving one side can spin faster than the threshold and other side will spin slower than the threshold and this is why rpm limiter feels so natural in the air so if you normally run motor limit because you're using crazy high kv motors you can combine motor limit with rpm limit no problem and also rpm limiter is nothing with turtle mode because during turtle mode only a couple of your motors are spinning so you're still having a full power flip over after crash and if you're scared of burning motors during turtle mode just don't jam your sticks hard because it will still be full power turtle mode and for the same reasons you don't need to run any special ESC settings just put your regular 6s settings well if you're running 6s battery the third item here is your motor kv it's not super important but it helps rpm limiter to estimate your throttle cap during first few seconds of flight before you hit full throttle for the first time the way rpm limiter works is pretty smart i think i already told it like five times already but repetition is a mother of learning so when you are full throttle rpm limiter checks if your motors are too fast or maybe they are too slow and depending on that it allows your drone more or less internal throttle it happens very fast you don't even notice that don't worry but before you hit full throttle for the first time rpm limiter knows nothing about your motors so it sort of has to guess based on your battery voltage and motor kv that you provided if you are a super nerd and you got this good old trophy then you can even watch rpm limiter numbers live while you're flying open osd tab and activate debug then move this debug somewhere all the way to the left so you can see all four values then go to cli and type set debug mode equal rpm limit hit enter type save then during flight you will see these weird numbers changing first purpose you can impress your fiance because now you have clever shit on your osd that nobody understands the first value here is your average rpm across four motors and you can see it stays pretty much 18,000 at full throttle because i set it to 18,000 in osd menu the second value here is also your average rpm across four motors but before a little bit of filtering that is done in rpm limiter code so you can see it jumps up and down a little bit more and the third value here is the most interesting it is your current calculated throttle limit and it will automatically climb up as your battery sags by the way this is only mine i gave it to myself this is a sad story if you don't want to use osd menu for whatever weird reason all of these settings are of course available on cla you just type get rpm limit and all of them are right here you can even find some extra here for example rpm limit p i and d which you really don't have to touch these pid values are helping rpm limiter algorithm to do the guessing and motor kv is also here you just type get or set motor kv rpm limiter algorithm might be updated in the future and in fact strictly guys already using much more clever 
clever version. Clever. I think it's a word. That version even have a limiter for how fast your motors can ramp up altogether. So stay tuned. All right, let's move on. For most of the other features of this special release, you need to activate throttle position in your OSD. Sorry, that's just how it works so far. You can put it somewhere in the corner. This is how your disarm statistic looks now. First of all, you have your total flights count, which you can still have an official beta flight. Then you have your CAX count. This is how many times you hit full throttle during the flight you just finished. Total CAX is how many times did you hit full throttle during the whole lifetime of your drone. CAC time is how many times did you spend at full throttle during your last flight. Total CAC time is how many times did you spend at full throttle during the whole lifetime of your drone. Average throttle is your average throttle during your last flight. Important thing to notice that the persistent statistics, the global total statistics for your counters across all your batteries and flights requires from your flight controller to automatically save the data as you disarm. And there is a CLI parameter that controls that. By the way, this parameter also exists in official beta flight. It's just less statistics there. So this parameter name is stats mean armed time s. In the official beta flight, this parameter is minus one by default, which disables global statistics. In mode it is set to 40 seconds which means your global statistics will be updated if your flight was at least 40 seconds if you land and disarm before that or for example if you crash then your statistics won't be updated for this flight global statistics is very fun but there is a small danger saving the data as you disarm takes a few hundred milliseconds and if something happens during this time then you're gonna lose all the settings in your flight controller not just global statistics like the whole thing gonna be wiped off haven't happened to me yet and i've been flying this for ages but i saw a few guys that encountered this problem and if you're scared of that just set stats mean arm time s minus one and disable this global statistics you will still have your current statistic like average throttle cac counter just not the total one another thing that h7 processors are extra slow when saving the data it even makes esc to reboot if you disarm when your flight was 40 seconds or more not a big deal but could be a little bit annoying so this command is your friend most of the other features of cac mode are packed in cli and it's pretty easy to access them you just type get extra and you will see the full list of them the funny ones are for example extra 100% throttle is just a text that your OSD will show instead of 100% by default it's CAC so every time you hit 100% throttle you're gonna see CAC instead of 100% on your OSD and you can easily change it right here just type set extra 100% throttle equal for example unstoppable I don't know how to spell it, sorry. Then just hit enter, type save, and hit enter one more time. So if you see ANS in my OSD, you know what's up. Similar thing works for extra armed warning, FC hot warning, land now warning, low battery warning, and turbo mode warning. All of them are already set to something unusual, but you can change them. The next funny parameter here is extra LED tree bit mask. You know, when you have LED on your drone and you activate blinking, it doesn't look so interesting, right? With this command, you can change the blinking pattern as you want. You just need to do a little bit of hacking open windows calculator switch it to programmer mode activate bean mode and then just start typing your pattern where zero is led off and one is led on and then just start typing your pattern with one and zeros like a hacker and make sure you have 16 digits total for example let's start with on then turn it off then turn it on and we'll keep it on for a little bit then quickly turn it off and then turn it on and then again off on off on off on off on something like this and then you need to switch to deck and just copy this number into our CLI command. Of course, remove the space. Hit enter, type save and hit enter again. And voila, so much more interesting now, huh? Now you can provide some anxiety to your friends. This is silly. Also, you can change extra OSD use quick menu. It's on by default, but you can turn it off and then you don't have quick menu. You've already seen what is quick menu, but let's walk through it quickly. Quick menu, quick walk. RPM limit, you already know what's that, followed by throttle limit parameters. By the way, RPM limit supersedes throttle limit. So if you have RPM limiter activated, then throttle limit parameters just make no difference. You can even keep throttle limit on, it doesn't matter. Then motor output limit, pretty useful for some guys, you can change it right here. Then force cells count, I think this is pretty convenient. If you know you're gonna use only 6S batteries on your drone, then you can put here 
6 or whatever cell count you're gonna use. It disables beta flight guessing how many cells you plugged in. For example, if you overcharge your battery, some people think it should be illegal, but if you do, then beta flight might detect your battery as discharged 7S and then you're gonna fly with like constant land now. I'm pretty sure you've seen it in the professional drone racing. Well, not with this setting anymore. If you put 6, then beta flight will always think you plug it in 6S battery. No more land now warnings at start. Everything good? Well, unless you burn your ship. VTX is your good old menu to change VTX channel and power with just a quicker access from here. Main drops you to regular beta flight menu with all the hundred features you need. Another setting in CAC mode is extra OSD show spec. By default it's on, but you can turn it off if it's annoying. It makes your flight controller to show RPM limiter settings, throttle limit settings and motor limit in your pre-arm screen. But as soon as you arm, it all goes away. It is mostly useful for racing because that's how a race manager can verify that you are flying correct spec settings. Quick tip, a lot of pilots like to do a test arm before the race starts. And that brings statistics screen on. If you want to show the spec settings back, just move the throttle up while disarmed. I burned my orca goggles a little bit with soldering iron. How did that happen? Alright guys, make sure you like and subscribe. No click that bell button or whatever youtuber must say. And it'd be very cool if you check my Patreon. The link in the description. See you in the next video. If I'm not lazy.